name is Dr. Peter Good. I am the lecturer in early modern Europe and the Islamic world at the University of Kent. My research is based on uh, Indian Ocean history, but particularly the East India Company in Iran. My uh, first book is forthcoming with IB Taurus, which is uh, the East India Company in Persia, uh, trade and cultural exchange in the 18th century. So uh, look out for that. Um, I've got a, a couple of publications out um, that look at uh, British involvement or the East India Company's involvement with um, uh, the creation of a Persian navy in the Gulf in the uh, 18th century, as well as the, the dynamics of, of uh, the East India Company's Farman from uh, Abbas I through to uh, Nader Shah, and how that affects um, essentially uh, the East India Company's uh, relationship with uh, Safavid Persia and beyond, and uh, how written agreements have power within, within themselves. That's fascinating. Um, really interesting. I, I know so little about the East India Company. I mean, I always think about it as some as a venture in India. So it's very interesting and important to see it um, and its work in Iran. Looking forward to the book. Um, what led you to this topic? So I started out, uh, I did my degree in uh, Arabic and uh, Middle Eastern studies with Persian at the University of Exeter in the Institute of Arabic and Islamic Studies. So uh, Thank you. Thank you to them, first of all. Um, I studied under um, Michael Axworthy and uh, Leonard Lewison. Uh, they're studying Persian and Persian studies, uh, then went on to do a Master's in Middle East History also at, uh, at IS and Exeter, uh, and then got my, essentially got, got into Persia and Persian history in, in a big way there, and then uh, I got funding to study a PhD at the University of Essex and the British Library on the East India Company in the Gulf. And essentially from that, um, my, you know, my topic grew out of uh, uh, going into the archives and, uh, and delving into what was going on there. And you know, your point about, about India is, 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 is very important, and that is that people readily associate the East India Company with India, but actually they, I mean, they get everywhere, frankly. They're, they're all over the place from uh, modern day uh, Thailand and Malaysia to, and Burma uh, to Persia, the Persian Gulf and, uh, and yeah, all points in between. And it's very important to my mind anyway, that we, we expand our uh, view of the East India Company, not so much as, a, as an imperial endeavor. I think that there's a, there's a certain sort of teleological argument that, uh, oh, well, you know, it's British or an English company, which then, and then there was an English empire, and therefore these two things, you know, naturally dovetail onto one another. And actually, uh, certainly from the research I've done in the past, uh, the, 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 the East India Company have, have a certain amount of power and authority, but usually only enough to mitigate um, very limited uh, situations and only to, you know, to, to, to secure very limited uh, safety, if you like, uh, certainly in places like Persia and beyond. So you, yeah, again, the, the Indian context is obviously the one we naturally think of, but uh, Persia, you know, the, the, the history of the company in Persia is incredibly rich and, uh, and very dynamic. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the topic of the book. We would like, love to talk about this more, but uh, just to stay on track, uh, why did you study? Why did you decide to study in the UK? Um, I know you said you mentioned you got a fu you got funding, but were there other reasons? Yeah. Oh well, well as, as as a Brit, I suppose I stayed I, suppose, I stayed yeah. put, but mm. but but really it was uh, I applied elsewhere. I applied in the in the US as well uh, okay. for, for 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 a PhD, but but didn't get the funding. So mm -hmm. yeah, I went for. I went for what I got essentially, um, but yeah, there's there's plenty of opportunities elsewhere. I mean, I mean, the US is one, but only, but only one. Um, yeah, the, the the Germany has a yeah quite a thriving Iranian studies and Persian studies community. Uh, again, I yeah I, I considered applying for a master's, but I chickened out um, <laughs> in Germany. So I yeah I, I ended up staying staying at Exeter. Mm, but uh, yeah, but, but essentially for the PhD, it was funding. It was happenstance. Yeah, I just ha yeah. I happened to get the funding in the UK, so, so I stuck there. 
No, that's that's good in a way. That's nice to know that the UK offers these things as well, because funding is a major issue for a lot of students. And uh, yeah, finally, too. finally, what are your thoughts on Iranian studies as an academic field in in the UK? Oh well, I mean, it's a it, big it, question. It's very close to my heart. It's, Yay! Yeah, it is a big question. <laughs> Iranian, yeah. Iran, I don't know. I think Iranian studies in the UK is sort of one of the it's sort of underappreciated I and mean, everyone says it's a niche discipline right and i think mm. yeah having having attended symposia iranica now for for the last you know few iterations okay it's a niche field but you know when you get those those sort of 150 200 odd people uh into you know well in, into a room into a mm. building it's incredibly vibrant it's incredibly lively not just in the uk but around the world and it's I think there's there's almost a slight sort of mythos around Persia. Maybe it's a bit mm. of Orientalism that sort of creeps in. Sure, um, interesting. But, yeah. Uh, but 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 I'm not even sure it it is that. I think that actually mm. Persia, Iran, is just a genuinely fascinating place. Yeah. And it's not it's not it's not about Orientalism, the sort of imagined imagined other. It is that actually the country itself is just fascinating. It's you know, it, 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 it's history, it's culture are alive with, um, you know, everything from, you know, the, the history of Central Asia to, uh, you know, the Caucasus and, you know, also, you know, Persian culture. So there's the, the recent book by, by Eaton um, that's just come out on India and the Persian. The Persian at world, yeah, world. that's right, and, yeah. Yeah, and Nile, Nile Green is the other one. Yeah, these two, these two books looking at the idea of a Persian at world, and I'm, yeah, I'm totally on board with that. I think, yeah, we think about Iran and Persian studies, and yeah, Iran is the is the home, if you like, of of, of Persian culture or the seat of Persian culture. But um, if you don't look at the and then, you know, just like I said with the, with the East India Company, if you look at the East India Company just in India, you're missing, prob I think, more than half the story. Yeah, and I think, that's true. You know, Iranian, Iranian studies is one part of, of, of Persian studies, um, and, but Persian studies itself is this sort of incredibly wide-ranging and, as I say, very vibrant community, but also subject. So in the UK and elsewhere, I'm, I'm, I'm going to fly, fly the flag for my discipline and say that yeah, we, are, absolutely. We, are, we are a global discipline and I think that's, that's really exciting. You, know, you get to mm. meet and work with you know, wonderful material and, and exceptional people. And we and we fit in everywhere. So that's true. Yeah, you, know, you, you uh, working on the East India Company doesn't make me any less of a Persian historian. I don't think. Yeah. No, absolutely um, not. Just, in yeah. fact, no. Yeah. Far from that. I think. Well, I think I think all of these interconnections are, are, are alive and they're 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 ready for us to sort of go out and uh, and knit it all together. And I think absolutely. That's, yeah, so I find that super exciting. It's very exciting. Thank you so much for your time, Peter. I really appreciate this and thank you for your for your thoughts. Anytime. Thank you very much for having me.